everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the Boss Pocket GT, and I'm gonna tell you why this has become my favorite device for sitting on the couch late at night while watching Star Trek with the captions on, while I jam along to new wave songs on YouTube. It's an incredibly specific genre of products that we all know and love. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a common experience. We all do that, right? But before I get into the specifics of why I think this is my favorite product for sitting on the couch late at night while watching Star Trek with the captions on, while jamming along to new wave songs on YouTube, I'm gonna cover something. I'm gonna like speak my piece. When these first launched, when they were first marketed, they were really pushing this angle that this is an education tool, like a learning tool. It has this whole section down here that allows you to fast forward or rewind or jump to markers in YouTube videos or lessons or songs that you're trying to learn parts from. And that's all awesome. It really is. It's a really smart portion of the device that I never use. I never ever use that part. I don't learn that way. I just like to rewind the entire song and start over from the beginning and just hang out and jam and vibe at the end of the night. I probably should learn how to use it. But if Boss wanted to get my money sooner, and by the way, I bought this. Boss didn't send it to me. I bought this with my own money <laughs> because I, I do buy things sometimes, guys. Even though this is a demo channel and things are sent to me all the time, I do buy stuff. But anyways, I lost my train of thought. Choo choo. Oh, now, now I remember, now the train's back on track. Uh, I was gonna say that Boss would have gotten my money a lot sooner if their marketing had led with the fact that this is a full blown multi effects unit that you put in your pocket. It's battery powered. You plug in your headphones, you plug in your guitar, and you can build all these complex and wonderful, finely detailed and dialed in presets to your own specifications, and then make adjustments to those presets with the face of the product. No other like headphone plug product that I've owned has real knobs on the front. These don't click. There's smooth knobs. You can make adjustments to gain, level, reverb, overdrive or distortion, modulation, and delay without even getting into the app at all. There's a volume control, master volume control on the side. It's so important to have volume control physically on these products. There's a couple products that I've used where you have to get into an app to control volume of your phone versus the volume of your guitar signal and stuff like that. And it's always just such a bummer. It breaks the vibe. It breaks like the moment that I'm enjoying sitting on the couch late at night watching Star Trek with the captions on while jamming along to new wave songs on YouTube. Like I don't wanna interrupt that vibe by having to get into an app to adjust even just the volume, let alone the tonality and the effects and the gain and everything like that on the presets that I'm using. So yeah, there's some functionality there that I'm very, very fond of. And it has a built-in tuner. You press the button and it's got a tuner. No other headphone plug product that I've used has a tuner on the face of it. I'm always like pulling up my phone and holding it against the guitar and praying that it'll pick up the sound of an unplugged electric guitar so I can tune the guitar and then have to get back. Like it all interrupts my vibe, you know? I don't want that stuff interrupting my vibe and the Pocket GT does the best job of not interrupting the vibe. So let's get into it. You wanna hear it, you want me to stop talking so much. I wanna stop talking so much. Here we go, finally. I'm gonna use my Fender Player Plus strap because it is an excellent choice for this sort of thing. It's got a humbucker, it's got singles, it's got a trim, and it looks good, right? It looks really nice. I'm gonna start out on this surf patch that I made because of course. And you know what, I'll jump around to a couple different presets and then we'll pull up the app and get into the nitty gritty. <laughs> pretty rich, isn't it? Good thing I can adjust it from the face. Or 
can max it out. <laughs> That's a lot. I can also bring in a modulation. I've got a tremolo on here. This is just the speed, so I can make it super fast. Really nice and slow. I could bring in some overdrive or distortion. Kind of sounds like I need a tune after that big dive bomb back there. And it's awesome that the preset stays engaged while you have the tuner on. It's the little things like that that make me love the Pocket GT. Bring the mod and the gain down. Bring in the delay, why not? This is gonna be a good video. Let's get into another preset I made. This is kind of like a mid crunch, like hot amp sort of thing. I, uh, I named it Classic 50 because it was reminding me of my old PV Classic 50. <laughs> distortion or gain here. Oh yeah. That might be a fuzz. What did I have for modulation? Trem. A common one for me. And delay. That's 
sounds nice. Let's check out my metal setting now. I think it's the next one. Nope, this one. I'm doing with a metal tone is that decent at all I know it's heavy it's got like a metal zone patch on it but anyways let's rewind a bit go back to the surf patch and I'll bring up the app and we'll start exploring how he do that how did he do that how did he make that patch am I connected right now hopefully no one sends me an embarrassing text message while I'm trying to film this. That would be so embarrassing. So here is the app and my signal chain for the surf patch that I made. You see we've got a noise suppressor, a reverb, an amp. The tremolo is there on FX2, delay, and the master output. Let's look at the amplifier, whoops, you hold down to get into the settings. I'm using a clean twin. There are a ton of different amps to choose from. Endless options, endless combinations with, with this sort of thing. Uh, there is a ton of different cabs to choose from as well. I find that the originals are usually the way to go. I'm not terribly picky with the cabs. Uh, then you've got bass, middle, treble, presence, and bright option for this amp on the modulation, where was it? That tremolo. You could choose from another list of incredible options. Compressor, limiter, touch wah, uh, tone modify, slow gear, octave, pitch shifter, overtone, feedbacker, phaser, flange, rotary, univibe, vibrato, chorus, sub delay. That's right, you could put a delay in the effects slot. You can actually stack four delays Maybe I'll do that at the end of this video because the FX2 can be a delay. Uh, the reverb has a delay. There's the dedicated delay. And of course there's FX1 all the way up here as well as a slot for overdrive and distortion and a couple other slots as well. There's a lot you can do here and you can change the order of everything. I've got the reverb in front of the amp because that's like the standard thing. I could put it there. Oh wait, where did I move it? There, now it's after the amp. Oh, I moved the noise suppressor. I see what I did. Okay, reverb I want before the amp. There we go. <laughs> but you can rearrange everything. You can get yourself in trouble. And that's the fun of Guitar Gear, is like getting yourself in trouble and making sounds you didn't expect. Uh, what else was I gonna do here? I was going somewhere with this and the train keeps leaving the station without me. <laughs> Let's check out that other preset I made. The classic 50 one. What amp is that? Whoops. The SLDN. I'm using the 4x10, of course, reminding me of the classic 50. Got the noise suppressor after the amp. I don't remember why I did that. And really not much else. I've got a reverb on there. Let's go to the metal one. Cause that one was interesting. What do I have here? And will the metal people be happy with it or angry about it? We'll find out. We've got a metal zone in the overdrive section. And again, tons of stuff to choose from here. All kinds of different options. 60s fuzz, muff fuzz, turbo OD, uh, blues OD, octave fuzz, metal distortion, fat distortion, warm OD. Like there's, there's, it's a sandbox. There's so much to mess around with. The amp, 
is a core metal. And then the noise suppressor after the amp, delay and reverb and master. <laughs> Let's build something. Do I have a blank patch in here? Oh, here's my rotary. This is a fun one. <laughs> Sub octave fuzz. Here's another fun patch I made. We go we've got an empty slot so let's pick an amp natural clean that is jangly that's hmm JC120 Tweed? There we go. Let's get the volume up. Pick a speaker. Let's get into what we really want to do. We want to stack delays, right? <laughs> so FX1, there's a compressor on there right now. All the way to the bottom, sub delay. There we go. Let's put on another delay with FX2. Another sub delay. Let's make it stereo. We'll put a pan on there. Change the time. We'll turn on the actual delay slot. Let's pick Terra Echo, yeah. There we go. Oh, I love that Terra Echo. And then there's one more spot. We could put a delay in the reverb. Because of course. We'll make that one long. Drive edit. A fuzz? Should we do a fuzz? I want to do a fuzz. We're already there. 60s fuzz?
over the top. Let's pull out some of that. Let's start over with this patch and do something different. Let me move the effects one in front of the amp. I want to see what other kind of trouble I can get into here. Do something maybe that is outside my wheelhouse a little bit, or maybe all the way inside my wheelhouse. We'll see. We're see we'll see where I end up. Uh, touch wall. <laughs> I built that fuzz octave patch. <laughs> I'm not smart enough for a harmonist. What is overtone? Ooh, it's like an organ. It even has that little like click organ thing going on. Should I put it before the amp? See, this is the fun. Yeah, I think it sounds better before the amp. Let's do a reverb that's not a delay. Ambiance. Bring in a stereo delay. Or a reverse. It goes up to like 2,000 milliseconds. effects two. Let's go back to that touch wall. Flanger. <laughs> 
Okay, okay. Let's rewind and <laughs> do something a little bit more normal. Maybe I'll try to dial in some sort of like clean sound with like a compressor or something. different types of compressors. Oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> There's what, like eight different compressors here? Stereo compressor? Wow, listen to that stereo width on that. I'm sure if you're running it after like the panning delay, that makes sense. High band compressor? I like the sound of that. Let's put on a tasteful reverb. Just a splash of plate. There's a, there's a ton. I could have done that, but that's not how I use this now. I build my own presets and really like this sort of product, that's really what it comes down to. You should be building your own sounds to like fit your own tastes, to minimize ear fatigue when you're sitting on the couch, watching the TV late at night with the captions on while you're watching Star Trek, playing along to new wave songs from YouTube. Like you wanna be able to come up with so like sounds that aren't gonna get tiresome, aren't gonna fatigue your ear. And this product is really fantastic at just allowing you to dial in the sounds that you want. I mean, within reason, like if you have some sort of favorite boutique amp or pedal or something like that, you're not gonna find a representation of it, but come on. For a battery powered, little plastic brick that fits in your pocket is pretty impressive. And just the design of it across the board is really intuitive to how I like to play, how I like to vibe at the end of the night, just hanging out, you know, doing the thing that I already mentioned, hanging out on the couch late at night, watching Star Trek with the captions on while I jam along to new wave songs on YouTube. We all know it, we all do it, right? <laughs> So there's other things that I didn't even cover here. There's a thing on the side, a little switch that allows you to pull out frequencies from whatever you're playing a song or a YouTube video or something like that. Uh, it pulls out frequencies of like your uh, voices and other guitars and stuff like that. So your signal jumps over the top so you can play along. It's like a backing track generator. It's not perfect. It's a bit of a blunt instrument, but it gets the job done. Uh, there's an auxiliary input if you don't have Bluetooth with your device. What else? Oh, it sounds really good streaming from Bluetooth. And the only reason I mention that is because there's other products that I'm not gonna mention. You know, I'll do a shootout video some other time comparing this to other products that, that do similar stuff. There are other products where the Bluetooth, it doesn't sound good. It sounds kind of muffled and dark. And this comes in crystal clear, like you're just plugged into your phone. Like it, it sounds really, really nice. And so the whole ear fatiguing thing is a big deal for me as far as you know, these, you know, headphone products that I use when I'm hanging out and the, the boss gets it. The boss has a really great audio quality when you're listening to music through it. What else? I don't know. I don't know what else, I don't know what else to say. Uh, there are other things down below here. We're an editor right now. There's session, which is where you can load, uh, you know, kind of like start and stop points for videos that you're trying to learn and songs you're trying to learn. 
the librarian where you can manage your presets and stuff, Tone Central, you can log into that and get other people's presets and upload your own presets. And in menu, you've got all sorts of stuff. There's the tuner. I mean, if you want a more accurate looking tuner. There you go. Uh, favorites, knob assign. This is where you can assign whatever functions you want for whatever effect you want to these various knobs here. Like sky is the limit. You want to tweak the time on one of your delays, you can do it in this sub menu. It's brilliant. It's brilliant, guys. Rewind fast forward in time for this stuff, USB settings, Bluetooth settings, battery check, owner's manual, and version stuff and whatnot. But it's all pretty simple. If you've used multi-effect stuff before, it's gonna be really easy to jump into this and experiment and come up with your own sounds and get yourself in big trouble with stack delays and reverbs and stuff like that. There's a ton to explore. And the goal of this video is not to show it all off, but to show you why I love this product and why I think this product is so great. And why, why honestly, like, I recommend this product. I really do. So, what else? I feel like I'm forgetting a lot of stuff. Here's a little peek behind the curtain, guys. Other, you know, guitar YouTubers will confirm in the comments if they watch this video. The hardest videos to make are the ones where you really like the product, like a lot. It makes it so difficult because you feel like you're not expressing everything that you want to express. You're not getting into every little nook and cranny. And there's a lot of nooks and crannies with a product like this. But yeah, it's just, it really comes down to, this thing fits my overall vibe that I'm shooting for when I use it. I use it as a tool for like just my own playing for pleasure at the end of the day when the kids go to bed and it's operation and how easy it is to dial in and how it balances the audio and the audio quality of it. It doesn't kill my vibe. And there are other products out there that interrupt my vibe when I'm using them. I have to get into an app to adjust volume levels or adjust delay and reverb levels or gain levels while I'm jamming along to a song. I can do this all from the face. Like one of those patches, I don't even need to pay, like change patches. I can pull back the reverb on the surf patch and bring up the amp gain and suddenly have, you know, a great like overdrive sound to match, you know, some song I'm playing along to or something like that. So yeah. Huge thanks to Boss for supporting this video. Again, they didn't send me the product. I already had it. Uh, I told them at Sweetwater's Gear Fest how much I love the Pocket GT, and they offered to pay my demo fee to make a dedicated video for it. And I was like, I was already going to do that, but I'll gladly take your money. So huge thanks to Boss for financially supporting the amount of time and effort it takes to make these videos. So yeah, I can't thank them enough for that. Thanks to everyone who watched and made it to the end. I really, really, truly appreciate it. You know, you know what? Some people, I haven't said this in a while, but some people like hanging out when the video premieres. They like hanging out in the chat and chatting with me and everyone else, all the regulars that watch all these videos on this channel. And if you wanna be some people, make sure you click the bell down below so you get notifications when a video goes live, when it premieres, so you can be in the chat as well. It's a lot of fun. It's honestly like, it's my little social reward for doing this work alone. <laughs> in a garage. I get to talk to people every now and then. Uh, and other than that, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, less likely be rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked. Click the links down below and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.